Cyberpunk 2077 features eight main different types of grenades, the effects of which are varied, to say the least. On one end, there's entries to this list with extremely limited use cases, and at the other, we have a purely overpowered and insanely fun way to play, which I'll be absolutely exploiting in future playthroughs. So without further ado, let's dive straight into ranking all the game's grenades before deciding once and for all which are best. Down right at the bottom, we have the Recon Grenade. This one comes in both regular and sticky variants, and due to a few other mechanics in this game, this one is more or less useless to everybody. You see, Recon Grenades, when thrown, will scan a 15 meter radius over the course of 7 seconds, scanning any enemies that are there and flagging them with a red outline, a bit like Ping or the Threat Detector. Actually, it's exactly like Ping or the Threat Detector, and therein lies the start of this issue. Now, this one could be a great stand-in for Berserk or Sandeviston players who can't use Ping an alternative way to scan the environment. Except the simple Threat Detector Kuroshi Optics mod already highlights any enemies that have detected you, so the only specific use case for the Recon Grenade, therefore, is when attempting a full-on stealth build. And that's the other issue. I cannot think of an instance for a stealth build wherein these would be needed. Sandeviston plus Optical Camo can make for an effective stealth build, but Optical Camo occupies the same slot as grenades. Also, if enemies see you throwing a Recon Grenade, it will immediately trigger combat. There's also Berserk Cyberware, but I mean, stealth and berserk? Who does that? You are better off just using your eyes and initiative, remaining out of sight and sneaking up wholly undetected, than risking blowing your cover for what? A little more information about who's where? This is a nice idea with potential. Say we could instead throw the sticky variant at a network device to make it work like ping, but with no traceability. And this could function as an awesome alternative. But as it stands, I can't really see much use for it. Still, for anyone interested, you can buy the sticky variant from the West Wing Estate Weapon Vendor, or the regular from Marty Genklo at the Biotechnica fuel station. Every vendor, by the way, appears to sell basic frags and then just one other grenade variant. It's not like weapon mods where they cycle differently in everyone's inventory, which is a good thing because I can tell you where specifically to look for each one, but there is a little more travel involved. Some crafting specs are usefully available, however, which can definitely save you time in a build where you've scaled up technical ability. Or equally, just by playing the game, you can find plenty as basic RNG drops around the world. Next up is the X-22 Flashbang Grenade. Now, if Recon was a poor stand-in for ping, then this one is a very decent stand-in for both memory wipe and reboot optics, blinding foes and stunning them for six seconds. Now, the Flashbang, of course, is a staple of shooting games, and I remember it being the classic secondary way back in older Call of Duties like Modern Warfare in 2007. Those seconds of stun that you get can be crucial in gaining the upper hand during a fight, with time to dish out damage and not receive any in return. At least, that's the case in a more basic shooter. Cyberpunk rather has so much futuristic technology to turn you into an uber powerful beast that instead of wasting your time stunning your opponents, you might as well just straight up use lethal attacks or even other grenades. A huge problem I have with the grenade system in this game is that they all compete for this one combat utility slot, and this can only be changed by going into our inventory and manually switching it out, as opposed to a smooth cycle wheel, the likes of which we get in GTA. Therefore, unless we want to be constantly breaking up the fights, we'd better pick one grenade or optical camo or the blood pump because those apparently occupied the same slot for some reason, and just use that during the fight. This is an okay system, I mean it functions, but more so for a grenade with more utility than this, because why would you choose to first blind with a flashbang and then have to shoot, when you could just straight up obliterate with a frag? In defense of the flashbang though, I will say that this is a decent thing to have in early game, particularly on very hard mode. Those few seconds of respite from constant assault can be a welcome help, a crucial addition to your starter loadout, and the fact that this can be crafted by default leans right into this concept. There's a homing version as well, which rises into the air, hovers for a second, then flies into a singled out enemy, but I think that kind of defeats the object for a flashbang. They're something you'd want in an emergency and therefore to detonate as fast as possible. Speaking of which, I'm sure most of you know this by now, but we can shoot grenades mid-air to detonate them. This is actually pretty easy and can even be done without a Sandeviston if you have the right tactic. Just throw the grenade without aiming and then hip fire with a tech weapon as the grenade passes your crosshair. And it will go boom. You'd better get used to seeing that because that tactic is going to be crucial to almost all the next entries. 
Next up is an entry that I'm kind of surprised to be ranking this low. Alas, its performance speaks for itself. The char incendiary grenade comes in regular, sticky and homing variants. It deals a small amount of base damage, which also applies a lingering burn effect for 4 seconds. Now, despite appearing from the outset like a rather powerful addition, this one doesn't actually, in comparison to others, inflict tons of damage, and it will take several before draining anyone of health. Compared to a basic frag, which is cheaper and easier to get, I'm just not sure why you would go with this. Even throwing it into clusters of foes doesn't yield any particular advantage over the others, as its blast radius is only 3 meters. Again, not as much as other, more powerful grenades. The homing version works alright, and if you can abide the delay whilst it homes, it will make sure to fly into a single target. Else, you could self-detonate by skillfully shooting a regular, or carefully aim with a sticky using the grenadier perk. The homing version can be automatically crafted at level 7, or bought from the Corpo Plaza weapon vendor before that. The regular can be bought from Robert Wilson at the Second Amendment store in V's apartment building, whilst the sticky spec can, according to the internet, be acquired during the lost and found crime activity just here in Westbrook. That one didn't come up for me personally though, so that appears to be an annoying change. And provided it's not just me, we will now have to scour for exactly where that one is, and when I find out, I will upload it in a short. Again, this would work great as a secondary grenade if we had some sort of equipment wheel, or even just more number keybinds on keyboard. As it stands though, there is hot competition for which grenade exactly deserves the one equipment spot. And this one, on a personal level, just ain't gonna cut it. The Molodet's Biohaz Grenade is similar to Incendiaries, but rather than sending out a fireball which burns all enemies within it at that moment, it creates a lingering poison cloud which lasts for 5 whole seconds. Any new enemies who enter within that time can still get damage applied. In this instance, there's regular and homing, but no sticky version, with regular again being the faster option, and homing working more accurately for those who want to throw and forget. It can also be an easier target to shoot whilst it hovers there and searches. This one also has the option to get some nice enhancements, and can be a good addition to builds utilising ninjutsu, though anyone using ninjutsu and not optical camo is, dare I say, a rare breed. Comment below if you're one of these people, because I genuinely want to know. But there are several poison perks within ninjutsu which can stop foes from sprinting and also allow poison to apply to robots, drones and mechs by becoming corrosive. Acquiring these, poison becomes the most viable lingering blanket attack, with poison clouds acting something like a physical equivalent of the contagion quick hack. Another great alternative way to reap the benefits of this exact effect is with the assault rifle Divided We Stand, which detonates stray bullets into Biohaz grenade clouds. I cover that in more depth in my Assault Rifles Ranked video. The homing version of this can be bought from the Vista Del Rey weapon vendor, and I annoyingly couldn't find the regular one anywhere specific, though I know it's there somewhere because I had both grenades and the crafting spec already from loot I'd found during my playthrough, though for the life of me I have no idea where, but suffice to say it's going to be somewhere random, albeit pretty common. Of the three grenades with elemental effects, I found the EMP to be the most effective and spectacular. The EMP of course deals electrical damage, not to mention quite a lot of base damage too. It's obviously especially great for robots, mechs, drones and turrets, but that's not to say it isn't pretty freaking deadly against humans as well. Now EMP normally just means taking out electrical systems, but I guess in Cyberpunk everyone is so dependent on those that it also translates into a lot of physical damage too. Now you can buy the sticky variant from the Sunset Motel, the homing ones from here in Wellsprings, and the regular ones were seemingly craftable to me, and must have been an RNG spec from out in the world. I did by the way travel to every weapon vendor in this game and refresh their inventory several times, so when I say I couldn't find one at a store, I do in fact mean, for probably certain, all weapon stores across Night City and the Badlands. It's annoying in fact that I couldn't find a specific place for the regular version, because throwing that one into a crowd before immediately shooting it with Widowmaker was my favourite way to use this one. Incredibly satisfying, but both visually and acoustically, especially when you get the hang of shooting them without slowing time. Okay, it may not look quite as cool outside slow-mo, but you definitely feel more skilled doing it. Much like the Biohazard Divided We Stand, EMP grenades have a weapon very closely related which utilises their effect. That being my favourite SMG, the Yinglon, which often causes EMP detonations on use and I discuss in greater detail in my SMGs video. 
the most powerful grenade for straight up damage in the game. The crafting spec for Ozob's nose is learned after completing the side quest Send in the Clowns, during which we meet Ozob, a clown who quite literally has a grenade for a nose. He'll ask us to drive him to Little China right by where Victor and Misty work. It's a pretty straightforward driving mission with one little fight at the end. After it's complete, Ozob will pay us about four grand and we'll learn the crafting spec for his legendary nose grenade. It's the only legendary grenade in the game in fact, with a crazy blast radius of 6.5 meters. It was reaching at peak to levels of 12,000 damage for me, and completely obliterating everyone even on very hard. And what's more, upon detonation it gives off this unique colourful party clown effect, which ironically makes the most deadly grenade feel kind of playful. Why isn't it at the top of this list therefore? Well, here's where we come to this grenade's major caveat. You see, grenades are all relatively easy items to come across in world, and hell, even if you do have to resort to buying some, they're pretty cheap. But Ozob's nose must be crafted and with the edge runner artisan perk no less, meaning we'll need 18 attributes in tech in order to get this one. Sure, that's not an amazingly tall order, considering we need that anyway to craft legendary weapons, except the two grenades above this are already almost as awesomely powerful as well as accessible at lower levels and easier to buy or craft. Hell, the quest to meet Ozob doesn't even unlock until pretty late into the main questline, so even if you grind to high crafting early, you still can't unlock this unless you blitz the main quest as well. So despite technically being the best on raw damage stats, and don't get me wrong, using this with the mid-air shooting tactic is something I'll totally be exploiting now when playing in late game, there are, on balance, the two final entries which are viable much earlier on and still hold up into the end game. Second from best, the Gash Anti-Personnel Grenade comes in one singular variant, which to me is a cross between regular and homing. Now this thing will hover up from where it lands like a homing grenade, but rather than seeking out a target, will fire 21 lasers in a myriad of directions, dealing insane amounts of thermal damage. Trust me, if you find one of these land at your feet, I'm afraid it's good night, because these lasers are utterly relentless. With a 4 meter radius and 5 second duration, it's most effective again thrown into clusters of foes. I mean, duh it is a grenade after all, but instead of throwing this one into the air and shooting it in the right spot, I would actually recommend throwing this to the feet of enemies. This is because the lasers will trigger before it reaches its final attack point in the air, offering faster damage from more lasers. Also, by throwing it to the floor, you'll be ensuring you don't overthrow your shot, and the grenade won't be too far away for the lasers to deal damage. This is probably the most user-friendly grenade in the game, dealing deadly levels of damage without requiring nearly as much skill or focus as the others. A true throw and forget. This thing won't even have an explosion timer because it simply won't explode, going less for obliteration and more for, well, gashes, I guess. Finding the crafting spec for this one is pretty easy, just head over to this assault in progress in Rancho Coronado. So finally, I find myself in the rather unusual position of declaring that within a game, set in a somewhat distant and technological future, that the most effective grenade happens to be the basic frag. This of course deals nothing but pure base damage, though can apply bleeding to any lucky enough or maybe unlucky enough to survive the initial blast. One of the best things about this one is it can be crafted immediately, and at purely common rarity for the regular version, we will simply need common crafting components. It's really great early game and just as good into mid and late game. Again, just like Ozob's nose, throwing and shooting this one is an insanely overpowered way to play, and I would seriously recommend trying it if you haven't yet. No specific perks are even needed, not even Grenadier, since actually aiming before throwing doesn't allow you to shoot quickly enough straight after. The sticky version also works equally as well, and if you are decent at aiming your throws, these are best reserved for bosses like Cyber Psychos, as you can get the grenades to explode as close as humanly possible. What's more, the crafting spec for this one can be bought from the Alder Caldo weapon vendor, who wasn't selling it initially when I went there, so I had to wait a day. We can't wait inside the camp though, but I can sleep in my bed, which is a preferable alternative anyway, because that also happens to be Pan Am's bed as well. And finally, of course, we have the homing version, which can be bought from Robert Wilson or the Arroyo weapon vendor. And these, despite not being as viable for shooting midair, offer something else entirely. Something that quite possibly nothing else in this game offers. A truly horrifying event to witness in many ways. 
is. You see, upon throwing one of these, the surrounding foes, whether human or robot, will stop what they're doing and just look up with a blank stare like they've seen the deadlights. The grenade appears to stare back for a brief moment before plunging down into them and literally obliterating them into nothing. Seconds before this happens, robots will scream danger over and over again. Their programming tells them something is wrong, but not what to do about it. There's nothing, after all, that can be done. People, on the other hand, say nothing, and the meagre silence with which they accept their fate is a highly unnerving prospect to behold. It's rare for enemies in this game to remain silent in combat, and I think the response to this grenade in particular singles out just how special it is when compared to the rest. The frags overall are fantastic additions to the arsenal, and if you can, go with Ozob's nose for the base damage, or otherwise just a basic frag. But when you get the chance, I highly recommend you give the homing frag grenade a go. The bizarre feeling I got when using it is a sense which not a lot of games can create for me, and if this video achieves one thing, then I want it to be sharing that bizarrely unnerving feeling with others. Thanks for watching. I'm Sam Bram, and if you want to learn more about weapons, vehicles, and more in Cyberpunk 2077, I have a bunch more videos covering these on my channel, and I'll see you very soon in another video.